I see a man in your life. What, only one? In the mid-1800s, a series of supernatural and miraculous events spurred the birth of a religious movement in upstate New York. A society of free thinkers and liberals, they coined themselves spiritualists. Quickly growing in numbers and needing a place to assemble and study, in 1879, they purchased 20 acres of land on Casadega Lake for $1,845. Men and women worked side by side, felling trees, clearing brush, and making paths. They had a vision, a utopia, free from judgment, for individuals to discover themselves and join others on the same path of spiritualism. Today, this hamlet is now 160 acres and comprised of 180 homes, a library, a museum, an auditorium, two hotels, and even their own post office and fire station. This thriving spiritualist sanctuary is known as Lilydale. They came by any means necessary, by foot, by rail, horse and buggy, some even sailing across oceans. These weary travelers flocking to the city of light, the bereaved, the mourning, the left behind, all making a journey to a place where they found faith and hope. For 143 years, this close-knit community has quietly comforted thousands of grieving souls while staying rooted in science and dedicated to God. So what lies beyond these gates? I'm going to take you inside on our exclusive journey, discovering historical facts and sharing some truly astonishing phenomena. And the secrets might just be hidden in these eyes. To fully understand the catalyst behind the spiritualist movement, we need to take a step back further in time, to a little cottage in Hydesville, New York. In December of 1847, John Fox and wife Margaret, along with their two daughters, Kate, age nine, and Maggie, age 11, moved into this cozy home. Within two months, they had reported mysterious knocking sounds as nightly occurrences. Quickly surmising that the raps were coming from an invisible intelligent force, they immediately called over their neighbors to bear witness. Together, they formed a way of communicating with the entity, through a series of raps corresponding in numbers to the letters of the alphabet. Through this method, they were able to deduce that they were in fact communicating with a soul who had passed over. Upon further questioning, the spirit had revealed that he was once a pack peddler named Charles Rosna. He explained that he was murdered in the house and that his body was buried in the cellar. That summer, when the soil was dry and upon digging, some human hair and portions of a human skull were recovered. Many years later, adding more evidence to the story, in 1907, the east wall of the cottage caved in and showed that there was a double wall built inside the house. Someone clearly was trying to cover up unspeakable acts. Within this secret tomb was the skeleton of a man and a tin peddler's pack. This substantiated the story that had been told. The rapping phenomena caused a widespread interest, and people from miles around came to hear the rapping sounds. The family at this point was much annoyed by the stir it had created, but could do nothing to prevent it. It became especially difficult to live normally when ministers took a hand 
and started to persecute them as frauds. The Fox family had decided to send Kate and Maggie to live with their older sister Leia in Rochester to escape the unwanted attention. However, they did not succeed. Both the notoriety and the raps had followed them. The spirit had affectionately attached to their two little girls, Kate and Maggie. This is not a surprising occurrence because children, having recently stepped over into the earthly plane, often are more sensitive than adults. The entity had chosen the two girls as mediums. Because of their clairvoyant talents, it was surmised that they were the key in what made the manifestations possible. The pair were crucial in the communication with the spirit. On the evening of November 14, 1848, in Corinthian Hall, Rochester, New York, they gave their first public meeting. The results were not as satisfactory as they wished, but was enough evidence for the audience to conclude that the knocks were caused by some unknown force. The doorway of communication between the two worlds had opened. Records tell us that immediately seances started all over the country, and mediumship began to develop. The birth of modern spiritualism had begun. The Fox sisters mm -hmm. are noted to be the birth or the uh, origins of modern spiritualism because mm -hmm. they were the first females that were allowed to go on stage. Okay. So the Fox sisters were about the first females that were on stage and they gave the voice to women. So we look at them with the women's suffrage and women's rights as being able to allow women to start using their voice. Mm -hmm. So they were exploited by their sister Mm -hmm. the oldest sister, and they recanted their story. There's a whole Fox, Fox sister scenario. The girls, they both married, and one married a Catholic. I can't recall which one. And when he died, um, or they said she can save her soul, that she should recant. So she did. She said, oh, it was all fake. It wasn't really real. And then basically, um, people then accused her of faking it and everything else. Yeah. Both of the girls died young of alcoholism, mm -hmm. one of alcoholism, one of heart disease. Mm -hmm. And But basically, she recanted the story and then went back and said, no, no, it was really real. So that kind of followed them around. Then after they passed away, they found the peddler's bones. That was 1907. They died like in 1892. 1892, 93. And they found this. It gave, gave uh, credibility to, to the what story. So the Fox a Cottage, it was moved to Lilydale in 1915. Mm -hmm. And then um, Floyd Cottrell, who was local from the next county over, mm -hmm. south of Buffalo, Floyd Cottrell also did mediumship by hearing tappings. So the Fox sisters got their their messages from mm -hmm. not hearing knockings or tappings. And so did Floyd Cottrell. So she came to the Fox Cottage and she would give demonstrations. She would also give readings. And as that picture shows, she would also act like a museum talking about the Fox sisters. Yeah. So the she was a follower mm -hmm. of the Fox sisters. So that, that was that. And the Fox sisters never came to Lilydale. Mm -hmm. They were not even known as spiritualists. Floyd Cottrell uh, was a medium. And um, I, I assume she was a spiritualist also. And she came here. She wasn't famous. She didn't become famous like some of our other people that have come to Lilydale. But she followed in their footsteps. And that was her um, association with Lilydale. The Peddler's Pack was um, found in the Fox Cottage in Hydesville, New York. We ended up bringing it here. In 1907, kids were playing in the basement and mm -hmm. the wall broke apart. The skeleton in the peddler's trunk was in that. Now, to go back a, a, a few years, it, it was a very unique way of hiding a body. Instead of just burning yes. the body, <laughs> this guy uh -huh. built hauled stones in, built an, uh, a uh, another like this far away from the other wall. And he built it up, put dirt in there, built it in there about this high. Then he put the body in there and the, 
Then he just kept on building the wall all the way up to the rafters. So you thought that was the outside wall. Like here, wow. here, that's that's the double wall there. Mm -hmm. This is this is the it's Ooh. up in right in uh, Hydesville. Mm -hmm. And they have this built around it. Bulletproof windows, fireproof building. And then they have tours there once in a while. Yeah. Two families before the Fox moved in. Wouldn't stay there because they thought it was... It was the Bell yeah. family. Then there was another family moved in who got spooked within a few days and they mm -hmm. moved out. Hmm. And as I tell everybody that comes in here, I dare anybody to crack their toes. Or their... How many times can you crack your fingers? And that that's what they Once. were saying is that they were so fingers. how can they crack they their toes out. that many times? Were the Fox sisters just socially persecuted because they were free-thinking women who dared to speak in public? Now, 130 years later, after their deaths, more and more evidence has come to light. Maybe now they can rest in peace, feeling vindicated. It's all forgotten now, the trouble and the pain, forgotten every word I in every tear you shed, we're still in love. It's all forgiven now, we're back in lovers' land.